we don't even know what this is called. Um, more, more trade graphs. So far, all we have done is the sine function and the cosine function. Those are those uh, graphs. Well, there's there's six trigonometry functions: the cosecant, the secant, the tangent, and the cotangent. So we need four more. Today we're going to do the cotangent and the tangent. Monday you will do cosecant and secant. All right. But by Monday, hopefully, this all sink in. It won't be that big a deal. There isn't anything new today other than one thing, one little thing. Everything is exactly the way you've been doing it as of last night. All right, so let's, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, the tangent in a, in a different way that incorporates everything we've been doing as a review. So hopefully we can get through that. Um, and then we'll look at the graph. So this will take the whole time to do this, just to show you two different graphs. All right? So it is a review. So what you should know without any problems is what the sign is. What, what does the sign tell you? Y, which comes from opposite over hypotenuse. So in the right triangle on, on a, uh, a unit circle, this value from theta is the opposite side, which this length is y, this length is x, and this is your adjacent side. And the hypotenuse is always 1 in the unit circle. So y over 1 is just y. Same thing with cosine. Cosine is the adjacent over the uh, hypotenuse, which we call just x. And the tangent, you learned, was uh, the opposite side over the adjacent side, which is y over x, which is the sine over the cosine. That is something you should not forget. All this should be really quickly come to your brain as soon as I say it. You should think of all this stuff. You shouldn't have to think very long about it. All right, so let's fill in this. The sine uh, coincides with the cosecant. The cosecant is 1 over the sine or 1 over y. Again, get to know this stuff really well. Memorize it and repeat it and so that you don't forget it because we're going to get to the point where, where you're going to give you formulas and you're going to or just expressions and you're going to manipulate the way they look based on what we're saying with these things. Alright? Alright, cosine goes with secant. That is 1 over the cosine or 1 over x. And cotangent is 1 over the tangent, or cosine over sine, or x over y. So we've been talking about that over a week now. Um, as we go through the next uh, chapter, uh, hopefully this is going to be really easy for you to remember. This is the basics. This is your foundation. So now uh, we want to look at the unit circle. We're going to do something different with the unit circle. We're going to combine the unit circle chart with that rectangular chart I gave you. Okay? Alright, so with the unit circle, let's just do the easy part here. What is that coordinate? Zero. Or one, zero. One zero. All right. So let's start off with easy stuff. What is the sine at zero? It's the y value. Sine is y. You just told me the sine is y. At that point, y is zero. So sine is zero. What is the cosine? Cosine is the x value. One. Very good. Daniel, what's the tangent? <laughs> Tangent is y over x. The y value over the x value. Zero. Zero, zero over one is zero. Great. Cosecant. Emily. Yeah. Cosecant. 
is 1 over the y value, what would that be? 1 over the y value is 0. What's 1 over 0? Undefined. You can't have 0 in your denominator. That's all right. That's all right. Secant, who can tell me the secant? 1 over the x value, 1 over 1. Very good. Is 1. And the cotangent is x over y, which is 1 over 0, undefined. Very good. Now, we've been graphing the sine and the cosine function. The sine and the cosine function have no undefined values all the way around the unit circle. Unfortunately, there are uh, many other trig functions that have undefined places. Those are going to be your asymptotes. So yes, you're going to have lines that approach um, certain values but never touch. Now you're going to do this exact same thing for the other positions. So let me help you a little bit here. 30 degrees. What is that uh, coordinate? The second you see it, the second you see it, you should be thinking long side and short side, which then is that. Now everybody do the six trig functions right here. Let me help you. Sine function. What's sine? Fraction times reciprocal. Rationalize the denominator. That's the tangent. Now, leave this someplace because you'll have to do this again. Because since the coordinates in a unit circle don't change the numbers very much, you'll have to do this again sometime. So if you want to leave that someplace, I mean, I don't care. You, know, you should know how to do fractions inside of fractions. Um, and you can do, redo the calculation. But if you just want to leave it off to the side, you're going to see it again at some point in time. All right, so cosecant is what? One over one half, which is? 1 times 2 is 2. Secant, 1 over radical 3 over 2, which is just 2 radical 3, 2 times 2 over radical 3, so rationalize the denominator, 2 radical 3 over 3. And cotangent. If the tangent at some point was 1 over radical 3, what's the cotangent? The reciprocal. Or you can just go ahead and take the reciprocal of that and figure it out, and you're going to get the same thing. It's the square root of 3. Great. Awesome. Notice there are no undefined at 30 degrees. Now everybody do 45 degrees. and then 60 degrees. And notice that 60 degrees and 30 degrees look a lot alike, so a lot of your answers are going to be close to being the same. While you're doing it, I'll do it up here, then you can check your answers.
check your answers. You need to do this. You need to figure this out. <laughs> Again, just like when we did the sine function and we graphed it, this is just your foundation of where it came from. I'm, you do not have to do this again. This is just using the unit circle to verify what it is I'm about to show you. Okay? The better you are at understanding this, the easier it is for you to do the graphing. So I'm just showing you where it came from. That's all. You're not expected to reproduce this. Now on the test, I'm probably going to give you the unit circle as one of your pages you got to fill out. Okay? Yeah. When we do the unit circle, do we have to do all of that? Yeah. No, I'll probably ask you questions. I'll probably say, well, what's what's the secant at 240 degrees? At that point in time, you'd have to say, okay, what's secant? Well, secant, uh, secant is 1 over x. What's the x value of 240 degrees? You look at your unit circle chart, and then you'll figure it out. Yeah. Can we make a poster of all of the secant, cosecant, cosine, sine? Can you do a poster? Uh, except for this test, you have to know that. Okay. Now, next chapter, you still have to know that stuff, but I'll let you make a poster and get some credit for that. Okay. Then. So if you want to make the poster now, that's fine, um, but you won't get credit for that until after the test is over. I mean, I'm not going to put it up until after okay. the test is over. But I will give you credit on a on a, um, a quiz that we have this chapter. Okay. I just won't post it until after the test is over. Okay? All right. Did everybody get that? This is this is how we say yes or yes. Did everybody get that? Yes. Did anybody not get that? Say no. Yeah, I made a dumb mistake. <laughs> What? I just made a uh, flipping error. Okay. All right. Did everybody do 60 degrees? Yes or no? No. Okay. Finish it, please. Yeah. Notice they're very close to what um, the 30 degree angles is. So, a lot of the same answers, just in different positions. Now, the big one I want you to know and do, there's two more, maybe three, three more positions I want you to do, all right? I want you all to do the 90 degrees, the pi over 2. I want you to do this one. We're going to call this negative pi over 2. Right? Negative 90 degrees is going to give me 270, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You'll see why here in a minute. We're going to call this pi. I want you to do all six functions for these three. Do it now. What's the co First of all, what's the coordinate of this? Zero, 1. This coordinate? Negative one zero. Thank you. This one? Zero, negative one. Okay. This shouldn't take you very long. Do it quickly.
Okay. This is all just so we can graph. That's the whole point. We use this to help us graph and get the answers quickly. <clears throat> now you're not going to yeah, of course. I'll just get it. Um, you're not going to draw this every time I need a value. And you may draw a unit circle to find out what the coordinate is so you can give me the, the trig function. You're not going to do the whole thing. And you're not going to get a chart to do it. So you, you are going to have to figure out how to get the answer without the chart. Okay? All right, so these are important for certain reasons. And you'll see why here in a minute. Now, are we ready to start graphing? No? Don't want to do it? Yep, we're going to grab. So have this close by so you can give me the answers and not sit there and be silly and stupid and act like you don't know anything. You have the answers right there. Tangent. Alright, so y equals the tangent of x. Okay? We'll say, we should say it this way. <clears throat> the tangent of t, whatever t is. t is our pi values, or tangent of theta would be your degrees. Okay. Remember, this is going to be our t, and this is what we get for y when we're finished. All right? t is x, and y is okay. Um, so at zero, when uh, t is zero, what do we get for the tangent? Zero. Zero. Excellent. Now we're moving. How about pi over 6? 30 degrees. What's the tangent of pi over 6? The square root of 3 over 3. Everybody take their handy dandy calculators, take the square root of 3, and then divide it by 3 and tell me what you get. Alright, what about pi over 4, 45 degrees? What's the tangent of pi over 4? One. <laughs> that doesn't look like a straight line to me. Pretty close. This is actually a little bit closer. How about pi over 3? 60 degrees. What's the tangent of pi over 3? What's the tangent? The square root of three. three. The square root of three. Everybody tell me. So, Lexi, tell me what the square root of three is on the calculator. Since nobody wants to talk to me, I'll just call you out. There we go. Got to have the calculator. I'll be able to tell me what the answers are. I'm so mean. Right. I am. I don't want to do this. Uh, 1.73. 1. 1.7 up here. Excellent. Okay, well that leaves pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. What's the tangent of pi over 2? Undefined. Undefined. That means we do not have a value at pi over 2. Alright, well this is, this is weird. Oops, missed that one. Sorry. Well, it looks like it approaches it somehow. What is pi over 6? How many degrees is it? 30, 30 degrees? Uh, take the calculators, make sure you have it in degree mode. Liam's going to tell me what the tangent of 30 degrees is on his handy dandy calculator. And then what does the tangent of 60 degrees say? 
Well, 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 same thing. How many degrees is pi over 2? 90. So, what would be the tangent of 89 degrees? 57.28. 57, okay, so it's getting closer and closer as it goes up. But not touching, okay? Excellent! Except, remember with the sine function, we kept going until we saw it repeat. Well, we get to stop here because there's an asymptote. But there is not an asymptote here. Let's go left. And on the x-axis, when you go left, what does that normally mean? It means negative. How about negative pi over 6? Negative pi over 4? Negative pi over 3? And negative pi over 2? That's why we don't say 3 pi over 2 when we're doing graphing. Okay, it is the same value, though. So, just for giggles, you said pi over 6 was 0.57. Negative 30 degrees would be 330 degrees, wouldn't it? Okay, so what is the tangent, Anna, of 330 degrees? Negative 0.57. All right, and negative 45 degrees would put me at 315 degrees, which is what in pi? A couple pieces. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll wait for you to answer it. 315 degrees, please. It's going to be a couple minutes. That's fine. We'll wait. Unless Daniel wants to help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? I'm waiting. This is something you should know. What was the question again? What is 315 degrees in terms of pi? You have a marker back there. Is it 7 pi over 6? Yeah. Right? It's in the middle one, it's over four. Uh -huh. All right, so what is the tangent of 315 degrees? Negative one. Down here. Okay, just to guess, my guess is negative pi over two. It says undefined over there, is that right? And that is what the tangent function looks like. Everybody go to your calculator. Make sure you are in degree mode and hit y equals the tangent of x. Make sure you're zoomed. It's uh, probably better than standard. So if you're at the standard window, hit zoom to enter. Does it look like this? Y equals the tangent of x, zoom to enter. Who does not have it? Okay. Are you in degree mode? Mm -hmm. I think. That's a good one. Uh, radian. That's a good one. That's pretty funny. Y'all got, I'm sorry, put it in radian mode. Yeah, it's supposed to be. I apologize. What? What's this happening? What? Hey, Kara. Part of it shows that. A few pieces. Yeah. It's like a hard time. Yeah. I'm almost having a heart attack. That's for the set of this. I'll calculate it for it. It's a losing. It's a losing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, it's in degree. It should be degree mode. Okay. Who else doesn't have it? I have a really weird version of it. You click zoom to. Yeah, zoom to enter and then there's stuff on the side. Okay, so what you're seeing is the repetition of the period. 
Just like the sine function keeps going in a wave, and the cosine function keeps going in a wave, the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant are all going to repeat. Okay? That's what the tangent function looks like. All right. Are you ready for something special? No. <laughs> you should be sitting here saying, are you telling me we could have been entering this on the calculator all along? Yes. But, the, yeah, you're not using the calculator on the test. The point is, you also have the answers in the answer book. What does it matter if you do it on the Okay? So, um, here's the thing. You're doing exactly the same thing as you did yesterday. So what we have is, I'll write over here, y equals a tangent of k x minus b. That looks familiar? Except, here's the one thing today that's different. K, or the period, K is K, all right, whatever. But the period is different. On the sine and the cosine, the period, the normal period is 2 pi. In cotangent tangent, the normal period is how far? What's this distance? What is it? Pi. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is pi, isn't it? Distance can't be negative. From the beginning to the end, it's pi. All right. So to find what the correct period is, instead of 2 pi over k, you're just going to use pi over k. It's the exact same thing as you did last night, except instead of 2 pi over k, you're going to do pi over k. It still shifts left and right based on what b is. Amplitude. Let me ask about amplitude. What's the amplitude going to do? What do you think? No. Well, not bring the two sides in, but not make it span out so far. It's either going to make it sharper or uh, lower at this point. Slower increase. That's what the amplitude will do. You just have to pick some points. Again, just like before, I don't expect you to plug all of these points in. This was just to give you the foundation of where it all came from. That's all. All right, so now I'm going to do a, a cotangent to show you what it looks like. Just curious here real quickly. What if I were, were to say uh, uh, the negative tangent of t? It would be the other one. Well, let's look at cotangent first. Y equals the cotangent. What is the cotangent? Is zero? We'll come back to answering what the negative amplitude does. Cotangent zero. Undefined. Undefined. Great. Starting right off with an asymptote. Wonderful. Cotangent of pi over four, please. Anybody see cotangent on the calculator? That's not cotangent of negative. It's not tangent negative one. It's what? Inverse. That's the inverse. I'm just asking you what's the cotangent power of 4? Uh, I'm sorry. I meant to say pi over 3. But yeah, cotangent is 1 and pi over 4. What's it at? Uh, pi over 3? What is the square root of 3? 1.7. Sake of time, well, I'll answer for some of these for you. Pi over 6. Cotangent pi over 6. Square root 3. Which is? Use your calculator. The square root of 3. That answer divided by 3. What's 
Go to hand to power two. Thank you. I got the two next up. Alright. What's this gonna be? Cotangent is x over y. One half over the square root of three over two is what? Radical three over three, which is 0.57, except it's negative. What's happening? Just gonna flip back around. What's it gonna look like? Do you see it yet? Yeah. How far over am I gonna go? Pi. What's the cotangent of pi? Cotangent of pi? You understand where we're getting these values, right? Cotangent of pi is undefined. X over Y, that's why it's undefined. So it's an asymptote. Cotangent at pi over 2, well let's do pi over 6. Cotangent at pi over 6. Right here. Uh, yeah, right here. Uh, the square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half, which is just the square root of 3, which is 1.7. That's where we're getting those values. And we're just, we're just graphing them like it's an xy chart. We're graphing those values. Okay, you just got to do one little thing at a time. I, this, you guys have never done this stuff before. So you're, I mean, it's a lot to take in. I get that. But you have graphed coordinates before, right? <laughs> That's all it is. How do you get those coordinates is from the unit circle, which according to the grades I've been seeing, almost everybody in here has mastered the unit circle. So you need to be able to use the unit circle to tell me the trig functions. So if we went from knowing nothing to trying to figure out a unit circle to transforming that into our trig functions. That's a big leap. I get that. But you're not incapable of doing that. You just have to take the time, work through it, and build up a little confidence. All right, so this looks an awful lot like the tangent function. It just goes this direction, like that. And it keeps repeating all the way on the left side and the right side. All right, now, the negative amplitude of the tangent, what do you think that looks like? The negative amplitude, like the cotangent, doesn't the negative flip it over? Okay. Here's the, here's the thing. Look at the beginning value and the ending value, and the beginning value and the ending value here. Those are different, okay? Just like the sine function and the cosine function, as you expand them, they look the same, but they are on different um, values. The peaks and value, the valleys are on different values, okay? All right, so what are you doing today? You need, so cotangent tangent to find the period is just pi over k. You still shift it left and right by b. What you need to do is you need to know what the period is. You need to know where you're starting and where you're ending. And then you can just draw what you need. You don't need to find every little thing in here. That's not necessary. This was just to teach you where it came from. Okay? I know you wish you could just say, well, just put it in your calculator. That's not what you're learning. Okay? After we get through all this, then when I ask you something, you can stick it in your calculator and spit out the answer. That's fine. Okay? No big deal. We got it? Here's what you're doing. 